Hi, I'm Dawn from the blog Parkinsonsandus.com. Welcome. Today I am going to make peach cobbler and I'm going to try a little bit of a different recipe because I'm going to use my sourdough starter for the um, topping for the biscuits. So we'll see how it goes. I don't really have a recipe um, like mapped out. I have an, an idea in my head and um, I've made biscuits before without the so sourdough starter and I've made cobbler before, so I'm gonna try to kind of combine the two and we will see what happens. So let's get started. Okay, so first I am going to just um, slice up these peaches. And I have three peaches and then I have two nectarines. I'm not sure how much I'll need. So I'll start with the peaches and see if I have enough. And if I don't, then I'm gonna use my nectarines. All right, so peaches are in season right now so it's quite easy to get and I had had quite a few so we'll slice these up you know they're ripe when you slice them in half and they pull apart quite easily Yay. All right, so we're just going to do little thin slices. I don't think I'm going to make them small. I don't think I'm going to make the pieces small. I think I'm just going to keep them nice and thin like this. All right, so we're going to throw those in a dish. So we'll put these in here. these into smaller pieces if you want to cut the slices in half but for now today I think I'm just going to do the larger thin slices okay so that's that's three but I think I will do more I think I will do the two nectarines just so we have enough Actually, sometimes like nectarines better. Sometimes the peach fuzz on the outside, um, I don't know, kind of wigs me out a little sometimes if I think about it too much. So I like the nectarines. But if you get a fresh, ripe peach, there's nothing like it. I think five will be just perfect. Okay, I'm go wash my hands. Okay, so next we are going to use a half a cup of sugar, but I'm gonna use monk fruit. Monk fruit is a plant-based sweetener and it's non-nutritive, so it has zero calories and it does not spike your blood sugar. So um, a lot of times I will use monk fruit in my baking. Not all the time, but for something like this, um, I think it'll be okay. So I'm gonna use a half a cup. And then I'm gonna use just about two tablespoons of, um, this is organic all-purpose flour. So this is just to kind of help the peaches grab onto that sugar and give it a nice kind of consistency, a nice maybe syrupy. Um, texture and then we're just going to mix this up similar to like when you make a strawberry shortcake you do the same thing you slice up your strawberries and then add sugar although I don't add flour to my strawberry shortcake but this I wanted the sugar to really just kind of grab onto those peaches so And then, now that this is kind of mixed up, we're gonna just let it sit for a minute while I 
prepare the biscuit batter and it will start to kind of um, soften up and uh, create its own juice. So be nice and soft and sweet. Okay, so we'll let that sit. So now we're gonna make the cobbler part, the, the biscuit part of the cobbler. And I am gonna use one cup of organic flour. When you're making like a cake or something like that, the flour and the sugar, everything should be measured pretty precisely. But for a cobbler, it's a little more casual. It doesn't need to be quite as strict. And then we're gonna use about three tablespoons of monk fruit again. It doesn't have to be exact. And then we're gonna use two teaspoons of baking powder and a half a teaspoon of sea salt. So two teaspoons. And then a half a teaspoon of salt. And then we're gonna take about five tablespoons of cold butter or I'm going to use vegan butter and we're just going to cut that in and we're going to make kind of a coarse dough. So I have the five tablespoons measured out here. And we're just going to cut this in to the flour mixture. like that and then just kind of cut it in pieces and then I'm going to use this and we're going to just kind of cut it in and you want to kind of press that butter down and you're going to create Kind of like um, crumbles, like flour and sugar. Flour, sugar, and butter crumbles. When you do it this way versus melting your butter and just pouring it in, it creates more of a flaky kind of biscuit versus heavier. Um, so for something like this, I wanted it a little more light and flaky. But if you don't have the time to do it this way, it works just as well if you melt the butter and just pour it in. Okay, so I think it's crumbled up pretty well. If you can see this, see how it's crumbled up? You see how that's crumbled? Okay, so this has been sitting for a while. So I am going to pour this into the pan. Perfect. Nice and juicy, which is what we want. Okay, we just spread it around, make sure it's even. So let's move this aside and we're gonna finish with the batter. Next, we're gonna add a half a cup of starter, sourdough starter, and a half a cup of milk. I am using organic soy milk and it's unsweetened. Um, but you can use whatever alternative milk you'd like. About a half a cup, we'll see how that works. And we'll do a half a cup of starter. All right, this is my sourdough starter. Just a little bit more flour just because this the sourdough starter made it a little too not too wet but the ratios are off a little so we'll add maybe like a half a cup more flour so this is where the winging it part comes we're just kind of 
play it by ear. Yeah, that's better. It looks pretty good. It mixed up very nice. Now when you cut in the butter like that, you don't want to mix too much because you want that butter, that crumble, flour, butter, sugar crumble to stay that way. You don't want the butter to kind of mix in completely with the flour and the sugar. So from here, we're just going to put it over the peaches. I'm just going to do some dollops and I think it'll spread out just nicely in the oven. If you want, maybe I'll spread it out a little bit before I put it in the oven, but we'll see. We'll see how this goes. Kind of like how it's just dolloped on. Makes it look kind of homemade and rustic looking. I think it looks pretty good. I don't even think I'm gonna spread it out. I want to see how it turns out just like this. Okay, these look pretty good. Um, I preheated the oven to 375, so I'm gonna put them in for, I'm gonna start at 30 minutes, but it might take more like 40, um, but I will start at 30 and I will check on them. So let's put these in the oven. So overall it took about 33 minutes. I checked it at 30 and it was done. It was uh, lightly brown, but I wanted it just a little bit more brown, so I gave it a couple more minutes. So overall it took about 33 minutes. So I would say um, set your oven to 375 and give it about 30 to 35 minutes and you'll be fine. So I'm just gonna let this cool and then I am going to make myself a plate and a nice hot cup of coffee. So I hope you like this video and I hope you'll give the peach cobbler recipe a try. It's very easy to make and it's a lot of fun during the summer when, with all the fresh fruit. You know, you can make this cobbler with blueberries. I'm actually going um, blueberry picking tomorrow here on the Cape and I thought I could also make a blueberry cobbler with the same recipe, just instead of the peaches using the blueberries. So. Feel free to mix up your fruit depending on the season. The biscuit will always be the same. So lots of fun, super easy, great for a summer dessert. And if you wanna be part of the Parkinson's and Us community, I would love that. I'll put a link down in the description below. And it's a wonderful supportive community where I provide nourishing recipes and joyful living tips for care partners everywhere. So until next time, bye for now.